done. What? Huh? Ah! Really? You clicked on this? You know this is Pluto Nash, right? This is like one of the biggest box office bombs that ever existed. I'd much rather you watch a video in the side scroller than put me to work for this. It's really okay. I, I won't mind. There's lots more interesting videos. Look, there's Cinema Snob reviewing how Naked Kirk Cameron saved Naked Mike Myers on Naked Christmas. The twist is, it's really Naked Kwanzaa. Wouldn't you much rather watch that? <sighs> okay. If you're so insistent, let's go ahead and take a look at this stinker. <laughs> Day off, baby! Yes! No, no guys, they're watching the video. They are? But they know it's Pluto Nash, right? That's what I told them, but they're still watching. But we were gonna get drunker than someone who watched Pluto Nash! Yeah, I know, but they want to see a review of it, so get in your costumes! Thanks a lot, dickholes. You can take your love of Eddie Murphy and shove it up your ass! Funny, most Eddie Murphy movies don't stop a drinking bender, they usually start them. most expensive yet lazy comedic bomb since Netanyahu who spoke at the UN, Pluto Nash lacks any sort of charm, originality, and yes, even comedy in what's supposed to be a charming, original, and comedic film. This movie's put on God knows how many worst films ever list, and in many respects I can understand, but in others, it just doesn't seem worth the effort. Hell, they didn't even put the effort into convert it to Blu-ray they care so little. It's so not worth the effort, I am literally phoning in this review right now. I'm not even here! I'm not wasting my time on this shit! I'm actually preparing for the next review! I swear this isn't a clue. So let's start off with the joke I know you're all waiting for me to make. Trust me, this is trying harder than anything in the film. This is Pluto Nash. After reading a slew of actors thinking to yourself, oh yeah, they were a thing because they were in that thing. We see Jay Moore doing horrible as a musician in a bar. How do we know he's doing bad? Because he has an accordion, of course. Apparently, we still like this nerdy cliche. Oh, what, was the taped up glasses bow tie and holding books musician not available? He also seems to be the owner of the bar, who serves his friend just because the script says he's his friend, Eddie Murphy. Wow. Here you go, Pluto. Insert immediate problem. When you hear the name Pluto Nash, what's the first thing that comes into your head? After that. B-movie, space adventures, goofy characters shooting laser guns. But the strange thing about this film is there's surprisingly not much of that. Don't get me wrong, there are some spacesuits and robots and such, but the story is mostly a straightforward mystery. Hell, it surprisingly kind of takes its storyline very seriously. Just look at all these serious conversations they have. Marucci had the bucks, he had the background. Why is he so set on buying your club? Because he's gotten to the city council because they're about to approve gambling in his town. There's a clone doctor named Runa Padankin. Runa was dealing with some pretty heavy characters, but she didn't tell me who. So if you're going to be lame enough to actually tell us we're supposed to take this story seriously, how seriously can we take it if we're constantly hearing... Pluto! Pluto. 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 Pluto! Pluto! Pluto. Pluto. Pluto! Hey, Pluto! Not much! Greatest irony is Murphy talks to more about changing his act as well as his name because it sounds so ridiculous. But this could just as easily be him talking about the movie's name and act. If the movie sat down next to Murphy saying its name was Pluto Nash, he'd be like, That's not even a thing. Did you make that up? It's horrible. It's horrible. You know what you need to do? Be a Tony Francis. Do you like that? Change the name. Or something more sensible like Jupiter Jones. So Pluto is busy doing unexplained occupation, as Adrian's brother comes in proving once and for all that less should equal more. Pluto's my best friend. <laughs> oh, please kill my career. My biggest claim to fame is working with Mafia. You mean us? No, the comedy that bombed almost as big as this one. He's a little backed up. Mm -mm. It's like more owes than money, but Pluto. God, I hope I never get used to saying that. Steps in and says he'll cover his debt with his mysterious income, as well as buy the bar. Oh my gift to you. We got a mere seven years later in almost the exact same establishing shot. Yeah, they're showing the city from so many angles, like above shot and slightly left of the above shot. As the bar has really taken off and turned into a dance club. Hey everybody, do the not trying. Okay, place your bets now. 18 and under club or Mormon rave? Ooh, 
Ooh, a third option! Ironic space mutiny party. So Pluto, god what cruel parents, comes across a young waitress looking for work to pay her way home, played by Rosario Dawson. My moon card expired, and I was told you were the one person in town who might actually overlook that. <sighs> Rosie, you said yes to a movie that had the word moon card in it. What's next? Clerks 2? Only if there's a love scene with a donkey. Actually, to Dawson's credit, even when she's in bad movies, she always looks like the only one who's ever friggin' trying. Everyone else acts like they can do this role on their sleep. In fact, I think Murphy is half the time. You know what time it is? Don't be calling me this time of night. What's wrong with you? Oh, sorry. Sometimes I sleepwalk with my eyes open. Was I talking in my sleep, too? But two representatives of Rex Crater... Okay, did they steal these names from the Cowboys of Mumesa? Want to buy his club for ten million dollars. Or, as they call it, ten million Hillarys. Okay, this is a tough one because as of the date this review is coming out, I don't know if this is incredibly clever or incredibly dated. So, for the first time ever, I am giving you a multiple choice joke! Just come back after November 8th and choose from one of these options. A. Well, they can obviously throw that prop in the fire. It wouldn't be the first time she felt the burn. B. Well, she bought the rest of Hollywood to get the presidency. Are we really surprised by this? Or C. It's time to fight, get the Muslims out, and fight the cycle to the die, or get to beating the bar! Pluto turns them down and asks his bodyguard android, played by Canada's most dangerous criminal, Randy Quaid, to escort them out. Model 63. Talk about ancient. Your sister didn't seem to mind. Screw you, robot! Boy, that metal plate in Eddie's head had bigger consequences than I thought. After Dawson slips into her most comfortable hatching out of a vagina made out of cray paper outfit. Come on, ladies, you all know you have one. Both her and Pluto drink some moonshine. I'll spit on that joke later. Why wait? And he looks over his finances on plastic paper. Because, you know, plastic paper equals the future! <laughs> But his club is blown up by Rex Crater's goons. This looks like a job for his finest water pistol. Bruno, Bruno, I think that's one of them. I'll intercept the call. Nash is alive. He took off after Jimmy, who's headed for the back. Thanks for the Cadbury egg cam. How exactly did layout work on that? So, Mr. Director, what should we do for this scene? We're on it! Gosh, I'm so glad they didn't replace you with that other director. They escape the gangsters and hide out as Pluto tries to ask some questions about what's going on. I got to get to Rex Crater. Forget it, nobody gets to him. But who the hell is this guy? He lives in a penthouse above the Lunar Grand Hotel. Never comes out. Bro, you was a cop for 20 years. You gotta have some kind of idea who he is. Some people think he's a clone. Bye! God, it's amazing how not interested they are. This movie should have a menu of not caringness. Hmm, yes, I might want the disinterested acting with a hint of tiredness, though I've heard great things about the half-ass acting with a splash of who gives a shit. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm saving myself for the dessert of disappointing conclusion. I hear they're the most popular of Eddie Murphy movies nowadays. Meanwhile, Dawson stays behind to look after Randy Quaid's rape face until some answers can be discovered. Where did the boss go? I don't know. Out. He said to wait for him here. Out? Okay, was he modeled after the Thermians from Galaxy Quest? Where are we going, boss? You will find my voice as grating as a blender on your nads. He gets a tip that Makeover Lab might have some clues to draw him closer. What exactly did you have in mind? We could start with some ass re-sculpting for her to get a little more, uh, bubblage. Yeah, thanks for your help on this case. Now let me reward you by insulting your goddess-like body. How the hell does this joke even make sense? Yay, that was probably impressive at the time, but now it's most likely an app on your phone. The future! Thinking that you need to rethink the ass enhancement. It'll work, it'll help out. I'm talking titties galore. Let's have it. Titties really flowing. Yeah, like that. Okay, movie, did you just forget that Rosario Dawson's body is flawless? This isn't a oh, men will be men scene. This is a what the Christ is wrong with you, you selfish asshole scene. It's like getting a tank for Christmas and being like, oh, I wanted one more wheel. Why are you such an ungrateful jackass? Hey, look, Pam Greer is his mother. There's literally no reason for this character except to say that, so moving on. They figure out they need to go to the far side of the moon to figure out who's behind this. 
Which means leaving their incredibly, phenomenally bland city. Yeah, maybe 10 or 15 years prior to this, these designs will look cool, but something really weird happened when the movie Blade Runner came out. For whatever reason, everybody said, yeah, let's make every single future city in any sci-fi film look like that. And that's what we got for years. Super Mario Brothers, Judge Dredd, AI, Total Recall, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Cloud Atlas, Demolition Man. They all look like the exact same town. I mean, were the movie gods watching from afar saying, Now hear this, every future city in film are to look exactly the same. Oh come on, you're barely trying with that performance! Yeah, because no one gives a shit if we try on this one. That's not true. These poor people are sitting through this review hoping, nay, praying that something beneficial can finally be connected to Pluto Nash! I don't even get it. We're movie gods? Yeah, did you put any time into this joke? Probably not, it's Pluto Nash! Well, how come you get away with half-assing it, but we can't? You don't understand. I've sat through this buffet of blandness. I've tasted the nectar of indifference. I've suffered enough! But we can't be making things any better. For as it is told, every time the name Pluto Nash is uttered, an accountant drags himself out into the streets and shoots himself. That is complete nonsense. <laughs> and apparently we live next door to accountants, but nevertheless, you do this with passion! Fine! Now hear this, every future city in film should look exactly the same. Hey, I said with passion! We are, just with the passion of Kevin Costner. Okay, good enough. Oh, come on, even the music's not trying? Curse you, Pluto Nash! Our heroes end up stealing a car so they won't be tracked because nobody would be looking for a stolen car. And it apparently has the AI of John Cleese not being funny. I'll give you to the count of three before I alert the authorities. One, I've two... I've disconnected your alarm relay. So get moving, Jimmy boy. Good God, I'm being stolen. Hey, everything else from this movie is stolen. Why not you two? Again, not sure if clever or wishful thinking. Thus they partake in a romantic scene that'll have you saying, boy, they memorize those lines. It's nice, it gets nice, look at this. Aw, oh, come on, it's a beautiful bad green screen out tonight. Don't touch those, they're for guests. My God, he's gonna get her drunk and have his way with her. What do you even say to a line like that, boo? Dawson imitates the audience by falling asleep, but wakes up when they finally seem to be doing some actual space stuff. Getting on spacesuits and jumping outside with little gravity. Well, enough of that shit. Come on, this is Pluto Nash! You were expecting more with a title like that? No, no, no. We know how invested you are in the mystery, so we're mostly gonna focus on that again. Computer's got no information on our mystery, man. Zimmer said WZW, not MZM. Initiate search. This movie is like Mars Needs Moms. You don't think it's gonna be good, but you'd think you get something that represents the title Mars Needs Moms. Instead, you get something dark, angry, and upsettingly boring. And here's the mascot of everything dark, angry, and upsettingly boring, Alec Baldwin, as he plays a character who they think is behind everything. What are you waiting for? A dance? Huh? Huh? Oh, 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 oh my god! Oh, my own. I forgot the stairs was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even think he's acting. I think this is just a camera crew witnessing a usual Baldwin outing. Oh, and for the record, he never comes back. Yeah, I'm not kidding. That's his only appearance in the film. I don't know if they're trying to throw us for a loop making us think he's the villain, but... If you have a star for only a few seconds and then say, hey, maybe it's him, it's probably not him. It's like thinking the surprise villain in a Spider-Man movie is Bruce Campbell. It's probably not gonna happen. As awesome as that would be. I've already worked on three designs that idea is so cool. Man, that would save the third movie. Hey, look, a cryogenically frozen dog. Pop that little bitch in the particle wave for two minutes under the floor. She'd be running all around the room. Well, nowhere. We'll just throw that in the dumpster with all the other scenes that seem to have no purpose. Okay, now that joke I know I can say is dated. Unless their new catchphrase is, you got hosed. But finally, we get a little bit of moon action as the gangsters find them and they have a little battle outside. Eh, anybody lose a directionless joke? Hey look, the May lost her dress. 
I don't get it either, so. Oh, come on, their heads didn't even touch. And even if they did, the gravity slowing everything down would be the equivalent of a light push. Careful, he might blink really hard at you next. So they zap their ray guns and get in their space guns. Well, at least this sounds like something that would be in a movie called Adventures of Pluto Nash. The only downside is, it's about as exciting as a Phantom Menace pot race. Great strategy. Maybe you can throw in the word now to emphasize the detail of your plan. They escape and come across a man named Felix who says he can take them to the city where Rex Crater is, but not before recharging their bodyguard. Mm, you know, I usually jump at the opportunity to make a dick joke, but in this case, I feel like I'd be robbing a future dick joke that was worth much more effort. So, I'm just gonna steal one from my Labyrinth review. I know it doesn't really connect, but... Mm. So they go from one every other future city to another every other future city, where they try to sneak around in disguise because clearly I would never pick them out of a crowd. But... Uh-oh, the slot machine is a bit of a slot machine, as it has the hots for Randy Quaid. Hey, good looking. How about slipping up to your room and playing with me for a while? Come on, big boy. Right here in the lobby. Oh, baby. You sick bastard. Security! Who would program a machine to do that? Are they all sex in the city slots? Now we have a machine pressing charges on a machine. It's not like a toaster suing a microwave. Does anybody really gain anything? But hey, remember the advice Jay Moore got from Eddie Murphy? Well, it turns out that transformed him into a superstar singer, selling out theaters every night. How the flying hell did that happen? In a one minute conversation, you change this into this? That's like saying, you know, maybe if you take off those glasses and change your hair, you'll look more attractive. Wow, I'm amazing, I guess. But more gangsters are hunting them down, so Pluto goes in for a kiss so they won't be noticed. Mmm, tastes like fading career. I think that worked. Uh, yeah, because if there's anybody who would be aroused by that, it's Rosario Dawson, not Eddie Murphy. But then again, she does have that non-impressive ass. Movie what you want! Speaking of which, she tries to break Quaid out of his holding cell for damaging the slot machine. Well, you would be a real peach if you could get me that bill. Well, I do have a penis, so why not? Your ass could use a little work, though. <laughs> Damn it! That's the last time we put stereotypical dumb guard bot on duty. But they get caught immediately after, so... For those keeping track at home, that's an hour and 17 minutes. As they manage to capture Pluto as well and show him the man behind everything. So you got it all figured out, huh? No, they don't do that. Lord knows this movie deserves a sequel. But they end up doing this weird thing where they have him look left and right for some reason. Why the hell did he do that? Yeah, I'm not concerned about what a weak, pointless, out of nowhere twist this is. I'm more concerned about why the hell he just did that weird head turn. Was he showing off his earrings? Is the doctor checking his balls and he just forgot to cough? Or maybe he was distracted by the check. They were constantly waving in front of him so he wouldn't run off set. <laughs> yeah, with that excitement, it must have been the check. So I know what you're thinking. What the hell was the plot of this again? Because when you really look back and remember it, it's spectacularly uninteresting. Pluto was cloned years ago by a businessman who wanted to use him as a puppet. But Buddy Love didn't want to be a puppet, so he killed the guy who cloned him, allowing him to take control. What does this mean for Pluto Nash? Well, his clone just wants to buy his bar. That's it. Yeah. Who cares? Why the hell is this the least bit interesting? Nothing of any real value is on the line. Even at the beginning, he just sort of bought the bar to save a friend. He didn't really have that much interest in it. So nobody really gives a crap about what happens in this movie. If you told me the goal of the film was to save a toy anus, that would have me more sucked in than anything that they just showed. Unless it was used as a joke to make fun of Dawson's ass. I'm sorry, I'm not letting that go. That is perfection!
So Murphy has the most symbolic battle representing his career as he fights himself over who's going to kill him faster. Thank God they both happen to be wearing the same suit. Lucky, lucky. Actually, to the film's credit, there is one brilliantly funny scene. <laughs> it was only a second, but by God, that simple staging is friggin' hilarious. I'll definitely give that a point. Unfortunately, next to all the negative points, it doesn't really balance out. This is for Dad and Dave. This is for Norbit. This is for me, Dave. And this is for Defendant Bill Cosby when everybody knew he was guilty. Yeah, look it up. I did that! Crabs, you lose. No, oh, sorry, I mean, a man has fallen to death on the table. Sorry, I always confuse that for crabs. <laughs> so, seemingly nothing really changes as Pluto goes back to his club and everything seems to go back to normal. The only difference is he lets Dawson become a singer, which he probably would have done anyway, and lets Quaid run the place, which he also probably would have done anyway. Well, no robot's ever been in management. You want the job, don't you? Oh, gosh. Just remember, we can't serve droids around here. My hypocrisy goes only so far. We end on Murphy doing his creeper face, and we're cheerfully reminded of the ultimate lesson. If a clone of you wants to turn your bar into a casino, don't let it. Go get drunk. Yes! <laughs> Where were you keeping that? You don't want to know. Okay. This movie is not only a bad comedy, but half the time, I don't even know if it's trying to be a comedy. It is so unimaginative and so boring that I don't even know if it's worth getting angry over. It's just forgettable. Pretty much nothing to take away from it. I guess as a failure, that's a very interesting kind of failure. One that had so much money thrown at it, and yet it still turns out so bland. But aside from that, this is one I doubt anyone's going to be looking to come back to anytime soon. And thank God, because I don't know how much more of this I could have phoned in. I still swear this isn't a clue. What were you reviewing? You don't want to know, man. Come on, let's talk about something that mattered. Titties galore, let's have it. Titties really flowing. Hey, Doug Walker here. Before I do the charity shout out, uh, I just wanted to say we give a pretty big clue as to what the next NC review is going to be. And uh, if you want to know my honest thoughts on it before that comes out, just not in character, just my honest thoughts, uh, you can check out Awesome Comics, our brand new show that just came out. And the first episode, we talk about Batman vs. Superman. So you can definitely go check that out, uh, hear a whole bunch of my opinions, just out of character, pretty much what I thought. And now we're on to the charity shout out and this week we are doing the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. This is the first humane society to be established in North America and is one of the largest in the world. It was founded on the belief that animals are entitled to kind and respectful treatment and must be protected under the law. They maintain a strong presence with programs that extend their anti-cruelty mission across the country and are recognized as a national animal welfare organization, boasting more than two million supporters across the country. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you can see all the pets they help get back to a normal, love-filled life that they deserve. Come on, look at these guys. You can't say no to them. Reach out and lend a paw to help these beauties get the best treatment they deserve. Stop by their site and see all the great work that they do.